I made a new friend and I'm gonna help somebody tomorrow. Uh, there's a gentleman that uh, is boondocking and he works in any construction job. And uh, on his spare time he does scrapping, like scrap metals and that. And just trying to stay alive because he's waiting on a concrete job right now. And uh, over at a hotel. And so he's been waiting all week for that job and it's not ready yet. So he offered me if I would pay him $20, he'll scrap all that metal that I've already got piled up, which I'm sure I'll have more. Um, and I said, but wait a minute. I said, you know, I that's it? And he said, yeah, you just pay me the gas money, 20 bucks. I said, well, no. So I told him, I said, look, if I can trust you, he goes, yeah, man. I live here, here's my number, everything, and I said, okay, look, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a majority of that money, and if we don't make at least 20, which I know we will, because there's grass, copper, and aluminum, a whole bunch of aluminum, aluminum's at 55 cents a pound, I mean, I got a bunch of them, and I got more cast iron than you ever thought about, but anyway, he's a real scrapper, he knows his stuff, I offered to let him buy it, but he just doesn't have the money. That's why. And um, so, uh, he's just really, really in a bind. That's the only way he's feeding himself is to scrap. So, um, and he was unloading a load when I was talking to him. So, you know, and I'd already showed him all the inventory. And uh, told him, you know, if you want to offer me cash, you can take it. You know, and then we started talking. He said, look, I'm homeless. And I said, oh, Jesus. So... I told him, I said, look, I will give you the majority of that money. I guarantee you that if we don't get at least $20, then I won't pay you the 20 I said, and after you get all that stuff loaded up, which we may be looking for tomorrow, I said, anything else I pull out that needs to be scrapped out of these other storages, I'm going to give it to you. He said, well, I can take it down too and get it for you. I said, no, I want you to keep that. It'll be your money. You do it when you want, whatever. You just come get it from me right away. And as soon as I text you or whatever, if you're free, come load it up so I can get it out of there because I can get this stuff cleared out. And uh, I want you to keep that for you. So you can eat and stuff while you're waiting on your work. And he's like, man, I really appreciate you. And I said, well, I appreciate you. I said, because I have a policy of every day. Do something kind for a stranger. Love everybody. You know. And help somebody. So, um, I am making a new friend. And I said, so you've helped me so much because I just made a new friend. And, uh, and I'm glad that I can help. I said, you know, we're all here together in this misery mess of this pandemic, and a lot of people got hit hard. And, uh, you know, um, I'm making money. I'm making money, so I'm not hurting on, the, on this, this business deal with these storages at all. I'm, I'm smoking hot, as a matter of fact, really, and I'm not even done yet. Um, so I'm okay. Especially in that particular unit. I've done very well on that unit. It's paid for itself five times over, at least. So, anyway, that just made my whole day. I'm so excited. And he was sure happy. And I invited him to the next Boondockers barbecue because I'll buy. And they can fly. And he appreciated that. So, um, yeah. It's always good to make friends because you would be surprised. When you get in a bind, you would be surprised to step out and be there for you. Because it happened to me years ago when 
I moved to Arkansas for my college, and uh, I was referred to that particular college for engineering, and I, I did it. I went, I drove to Arkansas, visited with them, and, and, and you know, let them show me the campus and tell me what they had to offer and so forth and so on. Uh, picked up paperwork, uh, stayed a couple days in a hotel, and then went back, and I said, man, I'm gonna fill this paper without and see what I got. And I already knew before I filled the paperwork up. And I was attending another college at the same time. So that's how early I filled my paperwork out. And I got authorized for so much financing and stuff. You could not believe it because I put my paperwork in so early. So I could move from one college to the other. I was already financed before I even moved to Arkansas. Because I did my paperwork. So, uh, yeah. So when... I did move to Arkansas. Uh, one side of the town was all black and the other side was all white. And there were very civil war. It was very, very sad about the white people against the blacks. Horribly sad. I'd never seen anything like it. I thought it was like something out of a darn movie. It was quite strange. And I, I can't hate people by looking at them. You know what I mean? I, I'm just not that kind of person. Make this. We'll see if I can slide through this bad baby. It's so hard to see though. I don't want to get too far out here. Here we go. Let's go. Ooh. I'm surprised the guy didn't tell me because there is lots of room there. So yeah, and when I when I got there, um, I was nice to everybody. People that I saw in the stores, the checkers, all that. Um, I, a very elderly black man come loaded my groceries into the car and he was like something out of an old Civil War movie and he was so charming and polite and I mean he did it all I was like whoa you know cuz I mean we had had you know baggers and all that stuff in California since I was a little kid and so it was really wild and and then people telling me in Arkansas that slavery still exists, that you would be surprised. I'm like, no. I'm like, you were lying. Thought they were like those Okies telling me all that crap just to be funny, you know? But it's true. It was true. Oh my God. So, um, I'm going to start that story in a minute. 